Hey, welcome to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. We're inside this time. You were supposed to do your level three, but uh, unfortunately, Tap's gonna be out of town. So, are you gonna fly that K-1275? Kinda want to. Maybe after we do this real quick, we should go ground test your rocket, and this video can just be an everything video. <laughs> um, it wouldn't hurt to ground test this one either, I guess. But, uh, here's just a couple things I've done. Um, we got shock cord in there. This, I can't wait to catch Fleck for this one, because this one's going to be fun. Um, I've stopped using quick links to attach fin can stuff. Somebody posted in the Tripoli group about uh, a rocket that was had some good horizontal speed from weathercocking, and then opened up a closed quick link, and that got me a little afraid. So I'm still running quick links in the upper section, because if it's going fast enough to rip quick links apart when the main's supposed to be coming out, we've got bigger issues to worry about. But, uh, yeah, there's two knots, and then there's a good almost foot of tail from each of the ha the one-inch flat Kevlar and my tubular stuff, both pulled back and then just wrapped with electrical tape, so that's not going anywhere. Um, rail buttons are on it. Uh, I drilled for shear pins, three shear pins in the nose, one in the fin can. Most of the stuff I've flown without shear pins, but Jason Griffin was my tap for my level three. He flies a lot of high impulse and fast stuff in these types of rockets, and he always puts one in the fin can, so I'm going to start doing that, especially if this is going to fly on an N at some point. But we thought we'd quickly teach you guys how to install an AeroPack retainer. So let's do that. So here you go. You got your AeroPack 98 millimeter motor retainer. Uh, what we're going to do before we drill any holes is we're going to just run some masking tape over the threads. Um, if you chip the threads up a little bit, that's just going to make the cap stay on better, right? The crazy part about these is the bigger they get, the more expensive they get, as you might expect. But the bigger retainer you're using, the more the uh, alignment tools. The alignment tool for this one was very expensive. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. You got your body of your retainer there, and now you bust out your uh, alignment tool. This is my Aerotech 98 15 360. So put it on the rocket, or on the case as it were, in the rocket. And there you go. Now you got it butted up against it. So you're just going to take your drill bit. It's a, almost the same outside diameter. It's actually, these are the same size as the. 1010 rail buttons I put on it. Yeah, 1010 buttons, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and motors. Crazy Jim flew an N5800 and a six inch wild man on 1010s, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm sure you guys know how drilling works, but you drill some holes, you screw them in, we'll get back to you. All right, I know you guys aren't gonna be able to see this, but uh, try your best to make sure that one of your holes isn't lined up exactly with one of your fins, that way you're not drilling into the fin material. But, uh, once you got your alignment tool in there, see it doesn't really want to move. We're just going to start it with one. That's going to be going right into the fillet, so this is going to take a minute. These are good to have. What do you have these for, Dad? Uh, I bought those a long time ago when I first started into RC. Oh, there's a tight fit. Oh, like a carnival game. <laughs> so these tools are probably about as old as I am, then, huh? Pretty close. And the perils of a uh, near minimum diameter. You slide it out and put it through the retainer and then push it back. See, this is why my dad's here. <laughs> <laughs> it's only gonna work for this one though, huh? That's true. So uh we don't glue these in, we don't put CA, we don't do anything. There's like ten bolts going directly into fiberglass. It's not going anywhere. Don't worry about that. They do come with those barrel nuts that I've never used. Yeah, um, I would put them in like a wood centering ring if I was, you know, you could also, I know the diameter is the same. I don't know if the thread pitch is the same, but 
hang on to these for uh, future 1010 rail button use if they happen to be the same thread pitch. Again, uh, my rail buttons just go straight into the fiberglass and sometimes I'll dab a little CA on the thread, sometimes I won't. In this case I didn't. In case uh, someone wants to try and make me switch to 1515 depending on what I got in there, that way I can go back and forth because I don't want to just have a bunch of holes or two different sets of rail buttons on there. This paint job almost looks really good, so I'm not sure. <laughs> there you go, just like that. Your aero pack's installed. All right, here's my shock cord for the nose section. I'm gonna show you guys how I do the quick link setups for these. These are, I think, 800 or 1200 pound rated stainless. Um, like I said, if we've got enough uh, movement, enough speed to rip one of these open when the main's supposed to be coming out, we got issues anyway. That parachute's probably not going to survive in its own right. So, uh, quick links up top, don't bother me. Quick links on the bottom, I'm afraid of now. So, I'll show you what I do. Standard single knot around the quick link and you leave enough tail that uh, you can tape it down to itself and I'm going to wrap it with tape. There you go. Just like that, like I said, or if you watch my channel, you know, I don't like complicated stuff. I like things that are easy and reliable, and that's one of them. So this goes to the forged eye bolt in the nose, and there will be forged eye bolts on the electronics bay as well. Do not use open-ended eye bolts. Forged or welded. Lucky for me, my little brother has a 3D printer, so... Uh... He's making the uh, altimeter base sled for the 5 inch and this is also going to be for my 6 inch Red Max and my 7.5 inch Iris. And uh, he's actually got color shifting filament in there so I guess that works out pretty nicely to, to match the rocket. Also 3D printed world of stuff, we've got some plans in development for uh, 3D printed fin cans capable of mock. So, I thought that'd be a fun video. Can a 3D printed rocket go supersonic? So I know it has been done before, but uh, I've never done it, so it'd be fun. Here's Dad's level three rocket. I want to show him your recessed. Uh, I'm doing that in the iris, I think. So if anyone ever wants to uh, donate me one of those single use Aerotech <laughs> O's, it'll fit. They got 60 inch fin can. That motor's like 65 inches long. But yeah, I don't think that's a. Uh, going anywhere i don't think so that's pretty in there there's like a good probably 16th inch of epoxy on each side right yeah and then it's epoxy to the coupler as well right and it's a double oh did you glue the wing nuts in damn that's yeah. nice that way that's uh never gonna be a problem yeah, and that's two piece so it was stepped then i epoxied them together oh so it's like a quarter it. inch thick then yeah. yeah yeah that shouldn't be an issue i almost thought about pinning it yeah, spots, but that's like, man. How am I gonna line that up? That's kind of what I was thinking about doing with this, <clears throat> but uh, I don't know. We'll see. That's, I mean, that's a heavy rocket, but that's a really <laughs> heavy rocket. But uh, yeah, so uh, we just threw a parachute in there. Nomex protector over the top of it. We're gonna still put some dog barf in. Gonna make a two gram ejection charge and see if that uh, gives the Gives it a good enough kick. You can do two grams on both sides. I think so. You give it a shot. Two like grams. This one, I mean, that motor comes up to here. Right, yeah. That's so what I was going to say. Have... People are probably going to be like, oh, two grams in a six inch rocket, but there's like no volume to yeah. this thing, especially with that case in there. It's going to be about probably equivalent to about four inches diameter once that motor tube's in there. Yeah, you used a calculator, didn't you? Yeah. And it was, didn't it tell you two and two and a half or something like that? Yeah. Estimated. <laughs> Yeah, I so. said 2.6 if it was 6 inches by 18, and um, it's only going to be like 4 inches. Are you going to put a shear pin in the bottom of it? Uh, I was thinking about it, just to take that out of my mind. Yeah, about that. Yeah, because like, I did the same thing when Jason said that. I was like, I guess there's no reason not to. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. He's not in. Alright, so this is always fun coming over to the park and doing this, but uh, people 
usually I got questions for us but the, um, so uh, just a heads up if you're testing like this we just have it running through the electronics bay in the top of the bulkhead where the e-match would usually go when it's flying you know make sure you seal off your electronics bay not really necessary to have your electronics in there when you're doing this so you know you don't want to accidentally get black powder residue in there even if you're not flying but uh just a heads up if you do this some e-matches are low enough resistance that just using the test light on an sc's controller will fire them so we ran into that once yeah so you know just uh just be weary of that yeah so you know just give it a countdown with the key before you put that in just in case so we're prepared for it Lights on? Yep. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you might want a little more zest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would do it for sure. But uh, just a little bit more just to be safe. Do two and a half and three because you got plenty of shock cord running room. So now uh, the vent band's going with it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's going to try and take the, the cable with it. In, out of your hand. Oh, yeah. I hope it doesn't go too quick. Yeah, it should probably just yank the... But, uh, yeah. Count down with the key again just to be safe like you were saying. Three, two, one. Yeah, and that's why we do that. <laughs> yeah, that... Ah! Yeah, that yeah, should be adequate. Grand. Two grand smith. So maybe just do two, two and a half backup, and then two and a half, three on the nose. Yeah. Went on the key. That's weird. Yeah. All right. Five inch Punisher. There's a three gram charge in there. We're doing the fin can first. You want to test countdown with the key again? Okay. Key only. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we got like <laughs> the anticipation. <laughs> All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, that'll do it, huh? All right, well, this should be exciting because I did a three gram charge for just the nose cone, too. <laughs> There's only like 18 feet of shot cord in there, but uh, yeah, go ahead. All right, one key only. All right. In five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> All right. In five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there's the extent of your shot cord. There's yeah. Shoot yeah, that's plenty. All right, I think that pretty much does it for this video. Um, ground tests are done. Everything seems okay. We got a good, uh, I might tone it back a little bit on the nose cone ejection charge there. You can tone it back, I need to tone it up a little. Yeah, <laughs> we'll just split the difference because you did two and I did three, so we'll both just do two and a half. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so next weekend, uh, M2050 and K1275. That's the plan, and maybe maybe something else. I don't know. Maybe that XL needs to fly again. Anybody want this? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> but we have a I-180. That'd be cool in the XL. Oh, yeah. Good old school cardboard rocket I-180 motor deploy flight. <laughs> yeah, we got a bunch of 29 millimeter stuff. Mm -hmm. I might sell some of my... I kind of want to sell the Leviathan and... Maybe if anybody wants to buy the old uh, one-shot deal, just because we got too much stuff sitting around, and it's never gonna fly again. The mm -hmm. Leviathan's cool, but I don't know, I'm forty dollars for that rocket. But I'll tell someone thirty if they send me a video of it flying on an eye. But uh, yeah, so thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to check out RocketVlogs.com. Go buy yourself a T-shirt and help us uh, get to launches and stuff. Got a bunch coming up this year. LDRS and Airfest for sure. Um, NXRS, if they're going to do it, I'll probably head over there. Uh, possibly some stuff at Black Rock. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.